She was the most beautiful woman in town. The men around her were always hitting on her. She was also the most unfortunate woman. Her husband died in a car accident. She was left with a huge debt to pay her debts and make ends meet. She called 20 suitors. Each person was asked to give one lira for a lottery. The winner will spend four years of happiness with her. This is the second film by Italian actress Monica Bassi. She plays the role of Anna, a beautiful widow in the city. Anna's wealthy husband dies in a car accident. She is left alone with her daughter. But before Anna can recover from the pain of loss, trouble ensues. Anna is told by her husband's lawyer friend, Jack. Her husband owes hundreds of millions of miles to the bank because of his failed business. And now those debts will be paid by her. Soon her and her husband's bank accounts are frozen and the villa is foreclosed on and the car and boat are auctioned off. Anna is reduced from a celebrity to a poor woman who can't even pay her rent overnight. In order to raise money for her daughter and herself, Anna took out the expensive clothes and disposed of them cheaply. But the women who had been jealous of him took advantage of the situation. Even the clothes she was wearing had to be bought. News of Anna's bankruptcy soon spread throughout the city. This made a lot of men think about Anna's beauty. Tom, a very powerful local councilman, he asked Anna to meet him through a friend. As soon as he opened his mouth, he offered to take Anna as long as she agreed that she could provide a car and money at any time. To show his sincerity he gave Anna a heavy diamond necklace. Faced with such a generous gift Anna panicked. After all, she was in need of money at this time. While she was hesitating, Anna accidentally saw Tom's cup with dentures in it. This made her feel very disgusted and threw the necklace in. Anna took this as a joke. She shared it with her girlfriends Mary and Jenny. Everyone had a good laugh. Anna Marie and Jenny were best friends for many years. They were very close to each other. But in the closet of Mary's house Anna found her mink coat. While Mary was away Jenny told Anna. In fact, Mary has long been interested in her expensive mink coat but has been unable to buy. This time to take advantage of her bankruptcy. Mary finally bought it back secretly at a price that was almost free. Anna heard the brain buzzing. I did not expect that her best friend was also behind her back. Stubborn Anna decided to take revenge on her. That night Anna brought Mary's husband to the house. She said she was lonely. Anna's beauty was unstoppable. The two of them soon slept together. But then Anna suddenly changed her face. Asked the man to send her a mink coat. Otherwise wise they will tell Mary about the two. The man was furious when he was hitched, but the next day he had to send the mink coat. Anna sells the mink coat back to the first door. With the money she got, she paid the rent and bought a used car. This soon became known to Mary. Angry Mary came to the door to ask for compensation. Anna, however, said with a relaxed face that the clothes had been sold and the money had been spent. You see what to do. Seeing Anna's fearlessness, Mary decided to tear her face off. She said to Anna you do not know, your dead husband had a woman outside. On the day of the accident, he was also looking for other women. Everyone knew about it but you. The news came as a bolt from the blue and devastated Anna. She soon found her husband's cheating partner, Jane. She confirmed this fact. Angry, she smashed all the pictures of herself and her husband. Even the wedding ring was thrown down the flushing toilet, overcoming the loss of her husband. Anna, she decides to use her beauty to raise money for herself and her daughter's future. She finds a lawyer, Jack, asked her to help her sneak a message around town, that she will hold a raffle, find 20 rich people who can pay 100 million lira, and one of them will be chosen to sign a four-year love contract with her. In these four years she will belong exclusively to this man, and the two billion lira raised will go to Anna. The lawyer breaks the news for Anna. Soon the rich and powerful men started to get excited. They looked at Anna greedily and tried to estimate their return on investment from her. The applications came in droves. Even her best friend Jenny's husband jumped at the chance. They wanted to raise money to enter the raffle. This caused Anna and her only best friend to finally fall out. On the other hand, gossip about her began to spread. Anna's family and friends thought she was crazy. This disturbed Anna. The idea of ending the raffle even came to her. This idea was soon dissuaded by her lawyer Jack. It turned out that the man also wanted to take advantage of the raffle to have Anna. That day Anna was driving her daughter to the street. She accidentally ran over a man in front of her house. Anna took the injured man home to dress his wounds. The man was handsome and funny. Anna could not help but feel a little bit of affection for him. The man also fell in love with Anna at first sight and frantically began to confess his love for her. In order to prevent Congressman Tom to dominate Anna, the man even took the initiative to break the Congressman and Anna's date. The man's brave confession finally touched
tugged at Anna's heartstrings. However, Anna understands that this poor man can not help himself through the immediate difficulties. She hesitates and decides to go ahead with her effort. But before that Anna decides to give herself to this man, the two of them had a crazy and wonderful night. The next morning Anna wanted to leave in silence. Instead, the man called her. The man asked Anna why she was in such a hurry to leave. Anna said she didn't want to say goodbye. They should never see each other again. The man asked if they would never see each other again after four years. Anna was astonished. It turned out that the man knew about Anna's lottery. Seeing that Anna was in love with him, the man then made a shameless proposal. He hoped that after Anna got the money they could still meet in private. If the money can share a part of their own that would be better. Anna finally saw the man's true colors. He was a con man who wanted both money and sex. Even the crash was planned by him in advance. Anna immediately disappointed in this man. She left his house with a face of contempt. Anna's huge raffle was all over town. Someone anonymously told the prosecutor that Anna was engaged in illegal prostitution and gambling. The prosecutor, acting on a tip, led a raid on lawyer Jack's coffers. Nineteen one hundred million dollars checks with Anna's name on them and a list of raffle winners were taken. The prosecutor threatened to put all the people on the list in jail. This made the big names on the raffle list nervous. Luckily, lawyer Jack was prepared in advance. He told the raffle winners that all their contracts had been secretly destroyed by him. Anna would never reveal anything about the sweepstakes in front of the prosecutor. Sure enough, the prosecutor came to Anna to verify the situation. When confronted by the prosecutor, Anna did not deny the raffle. She said that the money was raised by her husband's old friends for the widow and orphans. The raffle was just a thank you for their help. And the prize was a small boat offered by the lawyer, which is not illegal. Looking at the innocent look on the face of this beautiful woman, the prosecutor finally chose to believe her. The snitching crisis was solved. All the big names on the list breathed a sigh of relief. A few days later, the lottery winners gathered again at a mesa. They asked when the lottery would begin. At this point a dejected Jack finally told the truth. It turned out that in order to get back the check for 1.9 billion from the prosecutor, he recreated a new contract according to Anna. In this contract has no original lottery content. According to this contract, the prosecutor returned the seized check to Anna intact. So the 1.9 billion lira ended up in Anna's pocket. Then everyone woke up. It turned out that everyone had been tricked by Anna. While they were talking Anna appeared at the airport. She was going to take her daughter away with her. At the moment when she was about to board the plane. The prosecutor arrives and says goodbye to Anna, and asked her one last question, who was the anonymous informer? But Anna did not answer the question in the affirmative. Instead, she left him with a meaningful smile. This film was made 30 years ago. The plot now seems absurd and does not stand up to scrutiny, but it is a vivid satire of the hypocrisy of the film's lustful men, and the objectification of women in capitalist society. The end of the film Anna used their beauty and intelligence to harvest 1.9 billion lira means, can be said to be a power counter-attack on the patriarchal society's contempt for women. But the main attraction of the film is still Monica Besai's unbelievable face, the most beautiful addition to this mediocre film.